Good morning, dear students. In today's lesson, we will be reading and understanding the text of Paper Tigers from your Oxford Progressive English Book 8, page number 175. Although we've had uh, previously a discussion on the introductory uh, notes of uh, the text, um, this is uh, on page number 175 and 176. We already have covered the introduction to the text. Uh, where we find out that there are a group of six children, um, teenagers, namely Kath, DJ, Shami, Sharon, Kawasaki Joe, Roj A, Baza, and Tea Leaf, who are working for Mr. Ali. Uh, these children, they call themselves paper tigers, um, um, and they are a group of teen young teenagers um, who deliver newspapers before uh, their school begins. Now, a young boy uh, named Gareth, uh, he moves to this area and he comes to Mr. Ale for, the, for a job. And since he's from Wales, where, and his, um, you know, his name is Welsh and the way he uh, speaks um, has um, a Welsh accent. That's why uh, the, the paper tigers, those eight teenagers, this, they are, um, very unfriendly towards him, and they do they treat him um, with prejudice, and um, you know they they are suspicious of him, and they taunt him with different uh, using different rude comments. Now, um, Mr. Ali, although he has been living in Britain for a very long time, but um, since he is originally from Pakistan, he has also suffered abuse. Um, I, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the uh, prejudice, with the um, rude behavior of the British towards the Pakistani people. Um, over there um, in the UK, uh, uh, Paki is, uh, is considered an abusive word, which is very racist and very, very rude. Um, so, um, Mr. Ali understands the situation Gareth is going through, but uh, so much so that he uh, says that these, these children, these teenagers, they were convinced that Mr. Ali was dealing in drugs. Now, when the story begins, um, Mr. Ali is basically um, telling Gareth about an incident which has taken place in the past where the children, uh, they had called the police upon Mr. Ali, thinking that he is dealing with in drugs. Now, um, the, the story is in, um, you know, obviously since this is a play, um, plays are set in different scenes. Um, the play opens in six, scene six where uh, the teenagers, they have um, asked the police to come and investigate Mr. Ali because they are suspicious that Mr. Ali is dealing in drugs. So we will see in scene number six and seven, we will notice how the story unfolds and whether um, Mr. Ali really is a drug dealer or not. Towards scene eight, we will notice how um, a, certain, a certain few change their behavior towards um, Gareth. And then we will come to the end of the uh, extract from the play script. Paper Tigers, in Mr. Ali's, sorry, scene six is happening. If you notice, um, the words, the, uh, the, the script has been written in two different formats. You have the simple um, writing style, and then you have statements written in italics. Remember the statements written in italics are basically stage directions or other directions given uh, to show um, how the characters are going to move around or where the scene is taking place or what expression um, the characters are going to uh, give, okay? So basically italics or um, brackets Parentheses, they are used to show how, how a certain someone is going to act or move around the stage during the play. Scene six in Mr. Ali's shop. Police officer one. Now you just shut up. 
you're in enough trouble. All right, constable, open the bag. Now, you have to understand that different people are speaking in different tones, and we are going to use the same tone. Now, you just shut up. You're in enough trouble. All right, constable, open the bag. Police two opens the box, takes out a bag and opens it very slowly, hesitates, then slowly and carefully vets a finger and dips it in the bag, sniffs it, then tastes it. Police two looks puzzled, vets finger again, dips it in again and tastes it. Now remember this action of wetting your finger, dipping it in a powdery substance, sniffing on it and then tasting it. This is something that police officers are, um, you know, they are allowed to do in order to investigate what, uh, what uh, the powdery substance could be. Okay, and they do not take a nice mouthful. They just take a little pinch to taste what, uh, to test what the, the object might taste like. Now, over here, you can see that the second police officer, um, he tastes the powder once, and then he looks puzzled. That is, he is somewhat suspicious. He, he does not believe himself. And then he um, repeats the action. Police one, in a hushed whisper, in a very soft tone, well, constable, what is it? Why do you think police one has hushed? He was um, like speaking very harshly in, in the beginning, but why has he suddenly hushed his tone? That's what I want you to think. Police two, hard to say, Sarge, could be Nestle's. We're familiar with the brand Nestle, aren't we? Now, Nestle is a brand name of custard powder and coffee as well. This is the household name, so you must be familiar with what Nestle is. Hard to say, Sarge. Could be Nestle's. Police one. What? It's custard powder, Sarge. Of course it is. What did you think it was, says Mr. Ali. During the next few lines, the kids start to slip off. That is, during the upcoming lines, um, the characters which are being named, they are going to move off the scene. They're going to slip away from the scene. Why do you think they are going to slip off? That's what I want you to think next. During the next few lines, the kids start to slip off. DJ first, then Shami, Raj R, Sharon and Joe. This is going to be the sequence how um, they're going to leave the scene. Only Kaf, Bazaar, and Tea Leaf are left. Police one, becoming very polite again. Ah, oh, well, like I said, sir, we got this report concerning drugs. Drugs? You thought I was keeping drugs? Um, well, yeah, sir. Mr. Raleigh laughs. Ha, ha, ha. Good heavens, officer. How ridiculous. But you admitted. Oh, dear. I'll have to tell you all about it. You see, Mrs. Green, you see, Mrs. Green, who used to own the shop, used to get supplies from somewhere she shouldn't. I think someone from a hotel used to pass things on to her and she sold them to her customers cheaply. A bit of a fiddle, I think. I found these bags of custard powder and realized what she had been doing. So I was going to get rid of them. Calf. But you told us you'd be in serious trouble if they were found. Bazza. Yeah, that's right. I didn't want to be involved in a fiddle. It would have made me an accessory. Wouldn't it, officer? Ah, uh, well, I suppose. Besides, I didn't want to get Mrs. Green into trouble. She's a lovely old lady. Well, that's about... Well, what about the drug dealer who was in the shop just now? Drugs dealer? That drugs dealer was my uncle, Catherine. He's helping me to buy the shop. He was giving me money to buy new stock. I see, sir. Right, young lady over here. Over here. It wasn't me. Honest, it was him. She points at Bazaar. You liar. It was you. Calf hits him. Shut up. Okay, sir. We'll sort this out. You won't prosecute, will you?
Prosecute means that you're not going to detain them. You're not going to put them in behind bars. No, sir, we'll just have a little chat about wasting our time. Chuckles, chuckles means to laugh without making noise. <laughs> Keeping your mouth closed and laughing. <laughs> Paper tigers. Why do you think he's chuckling and calling them paper tigers over here? I want you to think and let me know. Sir, sir, paper tigers, officer. They're my paper tigers. I don't follow, sir. I'll explain sometime. Puzzled. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Right. Uh, you three tigers need to go behind bars down to the station with you. Come on. Calf, Bazar, and Tea Leaf are led away, protesting. Scene seven, the back room. The back room is basically a storeroom at the back of, um, you know, um, the, the newspaper or any store where, uh, you know, the car supplies are kept in abundance or where you can say it's a small office kind of a thing. The back room with Mr. Ali and Gareth. The present time. Now, whatever has happened till now was from the past. Okay, this was from the time when the police was called by the eight teenagers upon um, Mr. Ali, so that they uh, they would investigate uh, because these children they were suspicious that Mr. Ali was keeping uh, was was dealing in drugs. Now we are back in present time. So Mr. Ali was narrating the incident to Gareth. Okay, Mr. Ali. So there you are, Gareth. They were ready to believe the worst of me because I was different. People are like that, I'm afraid. Anyway, you see, you see that I know exactly what you are feeling. Gareth, what happened to Calf? They let her off with a warning without wasting, um, they let her off with a warning about wasting police time. But I let her keep her job. It seemed only fair. Funny thing. After that, the rest of the group seemed to change towards me. I'm not certain why. Maybe it was the pay raise I gave them. They liked the name Paper Tigers as well. That's what they call themselves now. I think it suits them. Now, over here, I would like you to think about why um, Mr. Ali uh, was not harsh towards Gaff and let her keep her job. And then I want you to think of uh, the reason why these um, children had suddenly changed their attitude towards Mr. Ali. Gareth, I think it's a good name. What does it mean? Whatever you want it to mean. So Gareth, do you want the job? Yes, please. Good. Well, it's yours. Start properly tomorrow. 6.30, okay? Okay. Gareth starts to go. Mr. Ali, remember things take time. You have to get to know people and let them get to know you. Yes, I suppose so. Thanks. My pleasure. Good night, Gareth. Good night. Scene eight. The paper shop. Mr. Ali, Garth, DJ and Tea Leaf are getting papers ready. The kids start to leave just as Gareth walks in. It's Yaki Da. Hello, Yaki. Gareth. Calf, DJ and Tea Leaf leave laughing. <laughs> it takes time. Yeah. Well, all set then? Yeah, no problems. Kawasaki Joe rushes in. Just like his name, the boy moves very speedily, just like a Kawasaki motorbike. You can search what a Kawasaki looks like, okay? Mr. Ali, you're early, Joe. Gotta fix my Vespa before I go to the school. There's something wrong with it. Oh dear, nothing serious, I hope. Dunno, I won't, it won't go. It conked out yesterday. The engine just cut out when I opened it up. Could be the carburetor. You might have to mix you might have the mixture set wrong. What? Could be the carburetor. You might have the mixture set wrong. What? The carb. That's a screw that adjusts the fuel air mix. It could be a blocked jet. Or your needle valve. How do you know? I used to have a bike on the farm. What sort? Scrambler Kawasaki 50cc. You lucky devil. Was it good? 
brilliant. Used to do trials on it. I couldn't do that on my Vespa. Do you want a hand fixing your bike? Do you mind? No, I'd like to. Honest. Thanks, Yaki. Sorry, I mean Gareth. Yaki. Yaki. What? Yaki. It's a good nickname. I like it. Oh, right. Well, you'd better get off then. It looks as though you've got a lot to do before you go to school. Yeah. Yeah. Come on then. We'll do the rounds together. It'll be quicker. Do you see how suddenly Joey has changed his attitude towards Gareth? I'd like you to notice where this change took place and why this change took place. Okay? Gareth. Okay. But Joey. Bye. Gareth. Bye, Mr. Ali. Ali. Cheerio, Joe. Cheerio, Gareth. Or should I say, Yaki. Gareth smiles. Joey and Gareth leave to go. Calf shouts from outside. Calf nastily in a very nasty manner. Oi, Joey, come on. Are you going to stand talking on to curry face all morning? Who do you think she's referring to when she says curry face? Is it Gareth or is it Mr. Ali? I'd need you to think about it. Who would eat curry? Oi, Joe, come on. Are you going to stand talking to curry face all morning? Joey and Gareth leave. Mr. Ali frowns. That is, frowning is when you, um, when you are hurt and you bring your eyebrows together. Frowns, then smiles sadly. Oh, yes. These things definitely take time. Now, here's a little colloquial language that is slang, which has been used throughout the text. Now, as you know, colloquial language is what you may use when speaking, but not in formal writing. If you were writing dialogue in a story or reporting in writing exactly what someone said, you, might, you may write colloquial language inside speech marks inside quotation marks, but otherwise you should not use it in your own writing, okay? This is something important and you should understand and follow. In their use of colloquial language, the writers of this play script are representing the real speech of the paper tigers. Kids is again colloquial in this play script, young people of around 13 to 16. Kids, which is also used for young children, is a word which originally came from America. That is, this is a word used in the American English, not British, but which is now used all over the world where English is spoken. It is not acceptable in formal written or spoken English. However, in this context, teenagers, adolescents, or young people are the formal equivalents. Remember, Mr. Ali used the word that I don't want to be in a fiddle. A fiddle literally is a stringed musical instrument, sort of like um, a violin. But over here, as slang, it, it means a dishonest, per, uh, a dishonest person or an illegal trick to make money on a fairly small scale. Um, you can say corruption on little basis, bribery or something. Honest. Honestly, honest simply means honestly. It means I'm being honest when I say it wasn't me. Yeah, it is widely used in speech for the word yes. Gotta means I have got to. Dunno means I don't know. Gonna means going to. Oi is an offensive way of attracting someone's uh, attention. Conked out means broken down or stopped working. The nicknames... Um, then you have the title nicknames. Nicknames are names given to people which are usually completely different from their real names. Nicknames can be affectionate such as bubbly, sweetie, bugsy, but they are often offensive and hurtful such as big ears, googly eyes or fatty. They can also make cruel fun of the personal, person's national identity or origins such as curry face, an extremely offensive nickname used by some anti-social youngsters for Asian people in Britain. Definitely people from South Asia or uh, mo uh, most probably people who eat curry, which, is, which are people from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, 
and so forth. Such comments are considered to be racist in Britain and are against the law, but honestly, people still use them. Now, on page number 181, you have this little activity uh, under the title, Speaking and Listening, Reading and Performing the Play Script. Read through the play script silently to yourself so that you understand what is being said and what happens. Look through it again and talk about the different tones um, different tones of voice and moods there are in it. For example, the police changes from being aggressive to polite. Gareth is polite whilst Kath is rude and violent. Uh, Joey's tone changes as he realizes Gareth actually knows about bikes. There are other examples for you to talk about, which I pointed out while I was reading and, reading and explaining the text. Talk about what you think the play script is teaching you about, why people behave the way they do, and about the relationships between different kind of people. <coughs> do excuse me. Now, I would like you guys to um, not waste time. Um, we, I have explained everything very clearly, and you have given a good read to the text. Now, what I want you to do is on page number 181 and 182, you have five questions under the title Reading for Interpretation. Write a detailed paragraph in response to each of the following questions. That is, all five questions will be answered in detail based on your opinions, okay? Now, what based on your opinions, based on your understanding of the text. Now write a detailed paragraph in response to each of the following questions. In each of your responses, use your discussion above and think hard about what the writers are trying to teach you in this play script. Use some quotations to support what you are saying. That is, you can um, pick um, um, you know, ideas from the text. You can uh, use quotations from the text and uh, to support your answer. Your first question is, why had the paper tigers been so quick to report Mr. Ali for keeping drugs? Um, I want you to think about it, okay? These are very simple questions. If in case you need help, you can ask me. I will definitely help you out. But this time, I'd like you guys to think of the answers and um, attempt them yourselves. And then I will uh, catch up with these answers in our tomorrow's lesson, okay? Now, question number two, how does Mr. Ali try to comfort and reassure Gareth? Question number three, what does the scene between Kawasaki Joe and Gareth illustrate? That is, what does it explain? And um, you're going to obviously explain how um, the knowledge of bikes uh, that Gareth has uh, impresses Kawasaki Joe and how this suddenly changes his attitude towards Gareth. What do Mr. Ali's words, which conclude the play script, tell you about him and the situation? That is very important. Um, when um, he finally, he frowns, then smiles sadly and says, oh yes, these things definitely take time. You need to explain that uh, Mr. Ali was hurt by um, the rude comment Kaf gave him, that is calling him curry face, which, um, left him um, disturbed, which disturbed him and which hurt his feelings. He frowned, uh, which shows that he was hurt, but then he smiles sadly and says that yes, these things take time. That these children, although he had given a raise to them um, so that they would start trusting him, yet these children still, uh, they don't have, uh, you know, they, they're not true to him and they hurt him. Uh, once they are talking, you know, amongst each other, once they're talking to one another, they use rude comments for him. And then you can elaborate further. What are some of the ideas and issues which this play script has made you think about? This is going to come completely from you. With that, we come to the end of our lesson. Thank you very much. I'd like you to attempt these five questions. Yes, I'd like you to make a pointer in your notebook. Uh, which will point, which will uh, clearly indicate that you have started uh, the first term of um, O levels one. I'd like you to use your previous notebook. Point, you make a pointer in your notebook, which will show that from here onwards you have started um, uh, O one first term. Okay, and I'd like you to attempt these five questions in your notebooks.
Thank you very much. With that, we come to the end of our lesson. If again, you have any questions, I would like you to text me and ask me for advice. Thank you very much.